in this unit, we do a bunch of different things. Robert? Um, starting with microscopes. So this is a microscope from, I don't know, probably in the early 1800s or so. Um, microscope's been around for a couple hundred years. And we'll talk a little bit about the history of that as we get into cells. Um, but we're going to see some things under our microscopes, things like insects. These are cells from a plant, cells from an onion. Um, we're going to look at newsprint to help us learn how to use the microscope. And these things are organelles, little parts that are within a cell that we can actually see in the microscope. So uh, we'll be looking at all those things. Have some vocab you can refer back to as we move on in our unit. So let's talk a little bit about some of the different types of them. There's many types of microscopes, and there's lots of variations on each of the types. Uh, we'll talk about just three main types of microscopes. And we'll only use two of them. So this is the first type of microscope that we're going to use. And this is the microscope we'll use the most often. It's the one you'll use in you know, biology when you get to high school and so forth. This microscope is called a compound light microscope. What is a compound word from, from English class? What's a compound word? Two different words that would put together. Yeah, like um, doghouse is a compound. It's a two words put them together. A compound microscope is called that because it has two different lenses working together to magnify the image. There's a lens here and a lens here. And they both magnify the image. It's called a light microscope because light comes through the stage into the eyepiece to form the image. The microscopes that we use will be like this. These are the compound microscopes we'll use. And their magnification can go from um, 40 times to 400 times. That means when we're using low power, what we see in here is going to be 40 times larger than the actual object. Or if we go to high power, it can be 400 times larger. So these numbers, the magnification, tells us how much the microscope is enlarging what we're seeing. There are some other compound microscopes that can go up to like a thousand or so. They need special lenses and oil, but um, that's about the, the limit for a compound microscope, a thousand times. This is another type of microscope we'll use. We'll, we'll use these on Monday. <coughs> this microscope is called a dissecting microscope although it's used for lots of purposes. Um, and it's a little different. It's set up differently than the compound microscope. All right. <clears throat> the dissecting microscope, what do you notice is a, a major difference with this microscope? versus the other one. Brandon? They have two eye holes? Yeah, it has two eye pieces. And we'll talk about that in a minute, about why that's important or how what that allows us to do. Um, also, the magnification is much lower in this microscope. Right? The dissecting microscopes, the purpose is not to so much magnify a lot. Um, and they magnify from about 10 times to 40 times. This is the third type of microscope, and that's a microscope we won't use. We don't have one of these here at school. This is called an electron microscope. Yeah, and it's different in that it doesn't use light to form an image. It uses a beam of very, very small particles called electrons. You'll learn about them next year in eighth grade science. But this beam of electrons can give a very high resolution, a very large magnification, much higher 
than either the compound microscope or dissecting microscope. An electron microscope can um, magnify up to a million times. So they, we don't have an electron microscope. Um, they're relatively expensive, uh, but they do have one in Whitesboro High School. I got to use it last year. Um, they have a whole. They had to set up a whole separate room in their school for their electron microscope, but it's really neat. I went there last year. I was able to use it. This is one of the. Um, this is one of the things I brought in. I brought in to look at an um, electron microscope the wing, a little feather from an owl, and we zoomed in on a certain part. And these are all like the fibers that make up the um, feather of the owl. And so this is not magnified all that much. This is um, 1,500 times. So we could have zoomed way in on this, but we were going to lose. We wouldn't really see all that much because right, there wasn't that much detail in here. So this electron microscope can really give you um, great resolution. And I'll show you some more pictures from that microscope in a minute. So you don't have these next few slides. These are just showing you some examples. So in the compound microscope, what we see looks really flat. In fact, when you're looking at something through this microscope. What you're usually looking at is something that's placed on a slide, a glass slide. Okay, you put it on the stage, and there's the light shines through. But in order, do you think, could I use this microscope to like look at my hand? No. Why not? Why wouldn't that work, John? Because it would just look glass because you see light Yeah, there's no light going to be getting through there for me to see. So I can't look at a thick, what we would call opaque objects, using this compound microscope. It has to be something really thin and somewhat transparent so that light can go right through it. So you only can see sort of a relatively thin and flat object in the compound microscope. Here are some examples. This is an amoeba. That's a single-celled organism. It's a tiny little thing that lives in fresh water. We'll actually get some living amoeba in a few weeks to look at. Um, but you need the microscope to see them, because that's how small they are. This is a paramecium, another single-celled organism swims through fresh water. We will look at those. We'll look at Euglena, which is found in um, fresh water as well. Here's some more interesting looking organisms, Vorticella, Radiolarins, Ornithorins. These are all these very, very small, they are alive. They're living organisms, but they're single cell. And so we need generally a microscope to see these because they're so small. Great. My mom took one of the microscopes, but her like thicker. Yeah. Yeah, they come in all different varieties and they sell like toy microscopes that are like small or made of plastic. Like sometimes you can get like Toys are us sometimes, and um, you know they're they're hard sometimes to get working well. These are made of um, metal, and they're a little more durable and a little more high quality, so it's much easier to use that type of microscope. Jenna, what are all these things purpose when it comes to making up the structure? They're not really they don't have a per they're just living things. They're just like you know squirrels or deer or oak trees. They just are living organisms that evolve over time. These all are live in the water. They're in the water, living in the water, like fish. I don't understand this. Like something like that that you'd be looking at. Those, you think would make it up? They're like mounted in there. Yeah, they're like, they're glued in there. So this dissecting microscope. Now, you guys notice that it has two eyepieces. The other big difference is the light. On the dissecting microscope, you can see the light. It comes from the top. Now, it's not charged, so I can't really show it to you very well. Although Mr. Curie has one charged over there, I think. But that makes a big difference where that light comes from. Because the light is coming from the top, Plug it in over here. Wait, does, does he know he took it? So here, what 
what you'll see is the light is shining from above, which is different. Because now, if I put my hand here, do you think I'll be able to see? No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, because the light's coming from the top, bouncing off my hand, then it'll be going through these lenses, and I can see it. So in a dissecting microscope, you can see things that are much thicker. You can look at your hand under there. It doesn't need to be a very thin slice. And these two eyepieces are also really important. So did you ever use one of those like cardboard um, things you put like your phone in and it gives you like a virtual reality yep. view yeah. of something? Yep. Yep. Or probably many of you have been to a movie, a 3D movie. In order to see the 3D part, what do you have to do? Wear the glasses. Have you ever seen like a drawing, a like red and blue drawing you put on the red and blue glasses and it looks three dimensional? Okay. So all of those things work based on one principle about how our vision works. We have two eyes, obviously. They both face forward, but since they are not right next to each other or one above the other, they're separated a little bit, each of our eyes gets a slightly different view of objects. I know you probably have all done this. Like put your finger in front of your right eye and just look through only your right eye. And then look through the other eye and swap. You know, you just done this, right? All kids have done this, right? What does your finger seem to do? It seems to move. Is it really moving? No. You're holding it still. Why does it seem to be moving? Sophia? Yeah, this eye, my right eye, is seeing my finger straight ahead. However, my left eye is seeing it at this angle. So it looks like it's over there a little bit. Now, hold your finger out farther, like arm's length, and do the same thing. Still moves, right? But how much does it move? M much less, right, than when it's right here. It seems to be the other side of the room. So what happens is because our brains work, what they do is they take the image from this eye and the image from this eye, and if both eyes are getting a very different view of my finger, that tells my brain, well, this object must be really close because each eye is getting a very different view. If each eye gets a more similar view, if my brain is saying, well, that object must be farther away. What if you look across the courtyard at those like vertical beams and do it? Left and right eye, it really seems like it doesn't move at all. So again, that's how one of the reasons we know those are far away is because both of our eyes see them in basically the same place. When you put your phone in that cardboard thing, what's happening is each eye is giving each of your eyes like a little bit of a different view of the display. And anything that it gives very different looks like it's close to you. Anything that shows both eyes, the object in the same place, it, your brain interprets that as it's far from you. Same thing with the 3D movie. Or those 3D drawings in red and blue. What they do is they draw one in red ink, one in blue ink, and then you wear those filters. And so one eye sees the red drawing, one eye sees the blue drawing. If they want something to look like it's like coming right at you, they make the lines far apart. So each eye gets a different view. If they want it to look like it's far away, they put the lines right next to each other so both eyes see it in basically the same place. So anyway, I talk about all of this. Because this microscope has two eyepieces, it allows us to get a much better three-dimensional view. We can see the depth of what we're looking at. Okay? Two forward-facing eyes give us great depth perception. We've evolved to have excellent depth perception. If you ever play a sport, baseball, lacrosse, soccer, anything, where you had to judge depth, if you ever like did it with one eye closed, it's really hard. Try it. Next time you're playing catch somewhere, try and do it with one eye closed. You're going to hit in the head a bunch of times, probably. Because it's much harder to judge the depth of something if you only have one eye working. So the dissecting microscope gives us these 
sort of three-dimensional views of objects. This is an aphid. Okay, that's a, it's a small insect. We can see it's like three-dimensionally. It's also a thick object. Light's not going through it. Here's a penny seen through the dissecting microscope. And we can see sort of the, the, the ridges and the shadows there. This is a seed that's starting to grow. It's germinating. This is the wing of a dragonfly. So the dissecting microscope we use if we want to see a thicker object and get a three-dimensional view of it. Not in that. And then an electron microscope. Like I said, we don't have one. But I'll show you some interesting pictures. Because you can get really um, good resolution and great magnification, you could also see the depth. What you do is you take the object you want to look at. It has to be coated in a, like a metal. So you can't look at anything that's alive. Then you put it on a little mount, and you put it in this little computer sort of a, a, a chamber within this sort of thing that looks like a computer. And it shows you the scan on the screen. And you can adjust the um, magnification and so forth. And so you can see a pretty nice three-dimensional view of the object. Here are some images. Now, usually they're black and white. Now, sometimes people will like color them artificially so you can see different things. That's a spider. It's an ant. This is pollen grains, tiny little grains of pollen, you know, that might inflame your allergies. They're these little smears with all these um, sort of prickles on the end. That's one human hair. It's a fly. Again, some of these now have been artificially colored. This is on the foot of a fly, and they have these tiny little hairs on it. That's how they can sort of stand on the wall or stand on the ceiling and just rest there without falling off. This is a flea that's in the fur of a cat. This is a needle that has thread in it. We see the thread as just kind of like a solid piece of string, but really magnify it, it doesn't look like that. Some other images. A maggot. Fly. Ant. That's another ant, I believe. It's interesting about insects is their mouth parts. They have a whole variety of mouth parts. Some insects, you know, eat other insects. Some eat leaves and sort of cut a little piece of leaves. There's all these different interesting mouth types in insects. Bee. Spider. Those hot are inside. This is an ant. Look at those. Look at those little hands. That, that's its mouth part. That's an ant. I think it's just like a speck of dust. Grasshopper. Another fly. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about the parts of the compound microscope. Next week, towards the end of the week, we'll be having a quiz on microscopes. And one of the things I have to know is what these parts all do, what they're called. So I have a little diagram here, and I'll show you on the actual microscope. So we said this is a compound microscope in that it has two lenses that will magnify the image. The lenses are here and here. The one you look through is called the eyepiece. And it has a lens in there. Just like a magnifying glass is a lens, or your glasses, your contacts, those are lenses. There's a lens here in this eyepiece. In this, our microscopes, the eyepiece magnifies the image 10 times. And then we have these lenses. These are called the objective lenses. This microscope, how many objective lenses does it have? It has three. And I can turn this part here that they're attached to, and I can select different lenses that will magnify the image different amounts. This part that I rotate, that's called the nose piece. And the way lenses
lenses work is they have a focal length in order to focus the image and so forth. Did anyone ever like burn stuff with a magnifying glass? Mm -hmm. So you know if you if you don't hold it in the right spot, then the light isn't all focused onto a small point. In looking visually, if the lens is not focusing on the right spot, you won't get a clear image. So there is this tube here that separates those two lenses, the right distance. And that is called the body tube, this part between the lenses. There's different types of microscopes that you can get. Our microscopes are cordless. They have a little battery in here. And then they have a light down here, a light source. Some microscopes you have to keep plugged in, like those dissecting microscopes over there. Um, these, some types of microscopes, these are, we don't really have many, any of these. More modern microscopes have a built-in light. What does this have? No? That's a mirror. Older microscopes used to have like a separate light that you would shine at it, and then adjust the mirror to shine the light off. We don't really use those anymore. So we have a light there, that's our light source. This part where you put your specimen that you're going to be viewing, it's on display, that's called the stage. Makes sense, right? Oops, sorry. So that's the stage. And then on the stage, there are a couple little metal clips that hold your slide down so it doesn't move around. Those are called the stage clips. I'll get this back going here in a minute. So the stage with the stage clips. What we are usually looking at on the compound microscopes is something that's been mounted on a slide. A slide is a piece of glass that you place on the stage, put your clips over it so it doesn't move around, and then you can see it. Underneath the stage, is a, you can't really see it probably very well, but there's a little lever here I can move. Now look at the top of the stage. What is this lever changing? Yeah, it changes how much light comes through. Because sometimes you look through here, it's like blindingly bright. And then other times it's too dim. So you can adjust this piece called the diaphragm to regulate how much light's coming through. The part of the microscope you would hold when you're carrying it on the side that supports these things, that's called the arm. And then the bottom, where we hold underneath, would be called the base. And then we have two very important parts of the microscope. There are two knobs on here, this and this. And if you notice, when I turn the big knob, what's changing? Yeah, the stage is moving up and down. But it's not enlarging the image. That's not what's happening. What happens when you change this is it focuses the image. So you have to adjust this until it becomes clear. The course adjustment moves the stage a lot. You could actually see it moving here. So if you need to adjust it a lot, you would use the course adjustment. But then you have these smaller knobs here. They do the same thing. They also move the stage, but you can hardly even see it. This just, when you've got to fine tune it, okay, or when you're on high power and you need very tiny adjustments, you use the fine adjustment knob, is what it's called, to focus your image. So these are just the 
parts again. I'm going to skip this right now because I want to give you this little quiz here. Don't worry about this. You have them on the previous slide form. All right, let's see if we can guess what some of the, so these are all through the electron microscope. So these are generally small things. I want to see if you can guess what they are from their look. Any, anyone have any idea what this is? Claudia? Oh, that's a good idea. No, it's not an eye, it's not a planet. It's the tip of a ballpoint pen. This is the part that gets the ink on it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a No, it's tiny. How about this? Yeah, good. How do you know that, Ava? Looks shiny. You can see like the shiny. rainbow shape. That's a CD. Good job. Whoa. No, no, or something small. It's magnified. Yeah. These are razor blades. What is this? Hairs. I don't understand. What's the black thing then? That's like a hole in the razor blade. So you can see the sharp angle of the blade. You can see the hairs that got cut off by the razor blade. That looks like concrete. Yeah. yeah it does. It's not s'mores cereal. Something else. I don't know. Any ideas? Also, something you eat. No, not marshmallows. These are really, really. This is magnified a lot. No. No. You're getting closer. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper. Salt. I, you all probably. Yeah, that's Velcro. Do you know how Velcro works? The like scratchy side is made of a bunch of hooks. The soft side is of loops of fabric. When you press them together, the hooks latch on to the loops like these are. And then when you pull, the hooks are kind of flexible, so they unhook and you can take it apart. What type of paper? Toilet. Uh, toilet. Uh, um, this one you might not know. It looks like rubber bands. Actually, nylon stockings. You know, stockings that like a girl might wear with like a skirt. They're made of these these um. Oh, oh, These fabrics yeah. attached. That's a banana. Chocolate. A record. A vinyl. Those are the grooves of a vinyl record. That's a toothbrush. Eyelashes. Somebody's wearing a lot of makeup, I think. Dental floss with tooth gum on it. All right, so we'll use the, comp the dissecting microscopes Monday and compound microscopes Tuesday, Wednesday.